This is the Tech Support Guy Show, episode 61, for Sunday, October 7th, 2012. Halloween gadgets and online backups. Welcome to the Tech Support Guy Show. I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy. With me today is Daniel McCarthy. Good afternoon. Who uh, is covered in sawdust today. I am covered in sawdust today. He uh, forgot it- all about the show today and, to be, and was too busy building uh, building coffins. That's right, a coffin. <laughs> and That's when right. someone's building a coffin, you don't ask questions. You really don't. <laughs> so, Dan, tell me about that a little bit. We'll get started in that. We you, you we have Halloween coming up soon, and yes, uh, and you have a new project. You're always do. doing interesting home projects. Did you start your <laughs> blog yet? I, I didn't. You know, I, I to start it out, I, I looked at uh, dadhacks.com and saw that there was an error page that that shows every time you try to visit the site. So I I contacted the owner to see if they'd be willing to sell it to me, and of course they didn't respond at all. But the error page is gone. So um, I haven't started that, but hmm. uh, I, I am preparing for it. You know, as we're going through the, the coffin building here, I am documenting it with photos and, and tips and, you know, measure measure a lot and cut once kind of things. <laughs> uh, sure. How's that work out for you? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we're we're building a full size coffin to use as a decoration for Halloween. We're gonna put it out in the yard and stuff uh, stuff some dead stuff into it. You know, Actual skeletons. dead stuff or or faux de- we're, dead stuff. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do faux uh-huh. faux dead stuff at least stuff. this year. Yeah, yeah. Although my uh, my middle son wants to help dig the grave for the coffin. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. He, but we're not gonna bury it. Well, I think you so. should have a permanent hole in your. Yeah, front yard, the size right. of a coffin. Well, I think you I, wouldn't I actually, get many salespeople. Yeah, that's probably true. So what we had actually talked about was making a uh, coffin that was made to appear as if it were half buried. Uh huh. I've seen I've seen pictures of such a thing. Right. We were gonna we were gonna make our own. We like making our own stuff here. It, it you know teaches us how not to cut our thumbs off and uh, things like that. But uh, so first round, we're gonna build the coffin that Mike is showing. Um, in the video right now, and then we're going to take a, probably, I don't think I'm going to get to it this year, but next year, I'm going to try to uh, put a hinge on the coffin lid and make it motion, uh, motion sensitive so that it lights up and opens up the coffin lid and maybe even lets out a little fog from a fog machine. As you work on that, you might have to share the technical aspect of that and how you get it to work. You know, if it's a Linux or Windows computer that runs that. (laughs) <laughs> right. Uh, you know what? Yeah. And, and all joking aside, I mean, I could probably use, uh, uh, what is it, Arduino or whatever? Right. Yes. I've been reading a lot about that lately. Yeah, I could probably, because the Arduino uh, could, could actually, it can control a motor. So with a motion sensor, sensor and a powerful enough motor, and it would have to be a fairly powerful, because it's not real heavy, but heavy enough, you it could, should be able to lift that up. You could probably get it done well enough by using a, uh, you know, like an X10 type thing. They have motion sensors yeah. and, and controllers, and that might be easier than having to build yeah. something, but not as much yeah. fun. Yeah, um, see, I, I we, definitely want to build our own stuff. Yeah, I like the sound of that. We buy our own stuff. I, I've shown a picture now that I showed you earlier of the uh, front porch with the... And I'll have to send you the link of where I got that giant spider web. But it comes pre-dyed with the UV uh, uh, sensitive ink. And all you have to do is go out to Lowe's and buy yourself a uh, fluorescent uh, black light. Throw it underneath that thing and it lights up very nicely. I don't know how well that will show up in the uh, video. But it uh, came out real nice. And... Uh, the other thing we do, we do have a little graveyard scene. We do a couple things. We we do Halloween, and uh, there's another picture there. And this is our graveyard. It has some foam gravestones and our fake little fence across the front. And the green lights turn out really well. And I've had a lot of people ask me about that. And all they are are fluorescent lights also from Lowe's. They're just like your compact fluorescent lights, your you know, normal CFL lights, but they're green. They have these party lights. They have green and blue and yellow and all of these. Mm -hmm. But the green ones, when put out for Halloween, look really pretty creepy and give a good effect. So that's a 
a good tip. Anyhow, and we have our singing pumpkins in the background there. I I can't find the link for where I found those, but I'll have to do that. They're basically inflatable pumpkins you can buy anywhere, turned around so the jack lantern face isn't fa- isn't visible, and you use a projector to project the faces on there that sing along with music, and it's pretty neat. We the kids really seem to enjoy it. So w- these are just pumpkins with a projection on them. That's correct. Inflatable pumpkins. Inflatable. Pumpkins. Yeah, they're you can't tell from the picture, but they're probably about I don't know three or four feet tall. Oh wow! They're they're wow. big pumpkins. You could just as easily do it on something smaller, but I'd you know you'd have a lower margin of error in placing the faces on the projector in the right location, pixel by pixel. Okay. What what kind of projector is it? Did it come with the inflatable pumpkins? No, no, uh, the inflatable pumpkins are the uh, you know ten dollar ones from Walmart or Staples or I mean Target or wherever. Um, the uh, projector is just one that I use from work, so I have it hooked up to a laptop that has VLC yeah. player running and repeat, and I use Adobe Premiere to uh, you know put the faces in the right part of the video. And uh, there's a site online. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Bates. It's some a play on the Bates Hotel. Um, oh. That uh, that sells the actual pre-made videos, and they have I think four or five different pumpkin faces you can choose from, and then make your own using Adobe Premiere, putting them in the right location, and so on. Nice. So it's so, it's pretty cool. I'll try and find the link to put in the show notes. What but, do you uh, house your pump your your projector in? Say it again. What do you house your projector in? Good question. It's actually hidden behind. I just closed it. Uh, it's hidden behind one of those uh, one of those gravestones. So okay. it's not really housing anything. We don't have it out, for, you know, all year, all season long or anything. It's just for trick or treat night. So oh, okay. we've been lucky. It hasn't rained on a trick or treat night. But yeah. if it were to, we couldn't do the singing pumpkins, obviously. Huh? I, I wonder if those little pocket. Do you remember when we were the little projectors that were out at uh, uh, Picos CES or we something? Were yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I wonder if one of those would do the job because you're not doing anything high resolution. No, you're not. Yeah, and the problem with those Picos are, as you said, the resolution is low, but also the brightness is pretty low. Uh, so I don't know if it would look quite as good, but it would probably be doable, especially if you were doing it, you know, if you had the projector closer to it and had just one pumpkin or two pumpkins would probably work better than trying to blow it. Or if you were just doing a regular pumpkin rather than an inflatable one, you could have it pretty close and pretty bright then. Sure. So, but anyhow. Yeah, it's neat happy stuff. Happy Halloween. Yeah, happy <laughs> Halloween. Um, Josiah in the chat room, I think he was referring back to your uh, back to your uh, uh, coffin you're building. He says it doesn't have to be electronic. Yeah, it doesn't, except, um, well, you know, uh, yeah. What fun is that, though? That, that's kind of what I'm getting. I at. mean, it would. I mean, it's going to have to have some kind of electronics to it, unless you're going to have a step or something that then pushes off on, you know, the the, the whatever, you know, the the ghoul that's going to jump out, you know, the motion sensor. Or something's going to, have to be electronic, but the motor itself yeah. wouldn't have to be. You could use something else. There, there's a guy here who has done uh, just about everything that I want to do with with the with the coffin. Um, he says cheap, but I've never seen anything on uh, actual costs for this coffin. So uh, I'm sure cheap is relative because some of that equipment I, I don't have yet. So I definitely have to buy it. But I pasted the link there in uh, the Instructables link into the chat so that anyone who's interested can take a look at it. I just found, that's excellent, I appreciate that, and I'll put that in the show notes. I just found uh, the website where I got this video from to to make the uh, inflatable pumpkins and all the information on that. It's BatesBunch.com, B-A-T-E-S Bunch.com, and I'll put that in the show notes. But they have a video I'm going to bring up now. Unfortunately, I know the audio isn't going to come out through the uh, podcast very well, but uh, it'll give you an idea here anyway. Let me fast forward a little bit. But what's cool about it is that he has... uh, the projector going across the whole house. So in addition to the uh, pumpkin singing in the front, he's got ghosts flying along on the uh, house and lightning strikes. And That is cool. I, I almost wish that I lived where there were people. <laughs> almost. That, that is actually awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I'm gonna I'll put that in the show notes for anyone listening on a recording and and wants to go see it or anyone watching live and wants to go look at it into it in more detail. The difficulty he's had, of course, in his show is trying to find the right location for the projector uh, sure. across in a neighbor's yard usually, in order to cover the whole house. And it's got to be a pretty high res projector for as wide 
as it's projecting there. With an amazing luminosity. You're too. right. Very high yeah. luminosity, so very bright. Yeah. That that on a scale of one to ten, that is what I'd like my house to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nice. I'll post the uh, link in the chat room here for those interested. Um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. You'll have to keep us updated on your projects as well as they move along, and uh, we'll have to share them on here. People might be interested in such things. Um, so, moving on to more computer type stuff. I had an interesting story here I found. Uh, someone sent to me, actually. I'll post it in the chat room for you. Basically, what it is, is this guy... You know when you stay in a hotel room? All hotel rooms these days have electronic doors. You slide the key card in there and it opens the door. Mm-hmm. Well, this guy came up with a, uh, a simple little circuit board that when plugged into the bottom of the major providers of those, the, the most common ones, it will open up the door. And because walking around with a circuit board and wires through a hotel looks suspicious, he went to the trouble of explaining how you can do this, but make it a small circuit board and fit it into a dry erase pen. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know if awesome is the right word. So I'm showing it on the screen now for those watching the video. Uh, it's got a, a dry erase pen, a small circuit board, battery, and he takes the tip out of the, the dry erase pen and puts the plug there that would plug into the bottom of these doors. And he has a video. I'll see if I can show it here. Um, he has a quick little video here showing the dry erase pen, just pops off the top of the dry erase pen, sticks it into the bottom of this uh, hotel door lock. And there's a little module, a little uh, area already there, and it just instantly unlocks the door. Apparently, it's a programming port on the bottom of the doors that that do that. <laughs> this is this is nice. So, it, it, the original hack uh, used the Arduino uh, board as its proof of concept. Uh, that doesn't look like Arduino in in the. No, it looks too small. In the diagram there, um, I was laughing or chuckling a little bit because one of the com- the first comment posted on October second says, uh, uh, "You can defend against this attack by checking into your home hotel room, but just staying out at the clubs all night. If criminals break in, you are not there. Solved." <laughs> and some guy replies to it, <laughs> "Brilliant." <laughs> <laughs> That's that's funny, but uh, so so the manufacturer of the hotel door locks have released a free upgrade that they're making available to hotels to fix this problem, which is a piece of metal that covers the port on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so which which you know leads you to wonder how many hotels are going to go to the trouble of going actually, around to all of their freaking doors and installing some piece of metal on the bottom of the door. Well, so. To, to put this on, I, I'm a, kind of a security freak. I, I, uh, maybe freak is too strong a word. But the hotels, most of them that I've, I've been to, they, they actually have cameras in the hallways. Yes. So um, if you're sticking a dry erase marker up a card reader's ass, excuse my language, somebody's going to know it. Yeah, right. If they don't notice it right away, they will see it on the recording. So exactly. unless you go out and buy a $3 ski mask, you're going to be in big trouble. That, that's true. But if you're wearing a ski mask in a hotel room, somebody is also going to take notice <laughs> and kind of maybe question you. That's true. I'm just saying. That's true. But th- this, is a, this is a neat hack. It um, is. And, uh, you know, just maybe you want to use a fitness center at, your, uh, at the hotel that's right around the corner because you, you're too cheap to pay for uh, a gym membership. And you got to swipe your card to get in there. Just plug in the, the marker. The dry erase marker? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're encouraging people to steal, is what you're saying. I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no getting around it. I am. I, I, I think it's clever. It, it's really clever think. in the sense that it's going to help make the doors more secure now. But sure. I'm not a big fan of him printing out the instructions quite so <laughs> openly. It would be nice maybe to go to the manufacturer first and say, hey, you know, in a month or two, I'm going to post this online. You might want to do something. So I think that I guess, would be the appropriate thing to do. Yeah, I'm sure he probably tried. So in, in a lot of cases, when these exploits are found, the, the people who have found the exploits actually attempt to uh, notify the manufacturers software or, or otherwise, mm-hmm. and often they're ignored. They get no response. Yeah, if that's the case, then 
then going public with it, I think, might be appropriate, or at least public t- to maybe not the degree of, of detail as he is, but sure. uh, but at least enough to catch their attention. So maybe they'll do something about it. And I'm going to I'm going out to Portland, Oregon here at the end of the week and uh, staying at a hotel there. And you can be sure that I will be looking at the bottom of my door lock to see if there's a little port open there. Yeah. Well, if you're staying in your hotel room, my wife does it and it, and it always frustrates me because it always catches me. She puts that lock on there. Of so that course. Actually, she, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what it's there for. Yeah. See, but, but see, I'm kind of dumb. And every time I try to go out the door, ah. just, the, 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 the darn thing catches me. Now, do you time. think that she's doing it for security or just because she thinks it's funny to see you get caught by the door? <laughs> both both it's definitely it's definitely security uh mostly but i she does get a chuckle at, at my response every time because i you know i'm quite yeah i certainly yeah. always do that too but i was at a hotel near pittsburgh uh, i don't know six months ago or so and there was a a, a little I, I was gonna say a little girl that's not appropriate a young lady who was working at the front desk all alone and there was a I was waiting to check in and another customer was in front of me and they had already checked in and put their luggage into the room and they came out and somehow when they came out that that manual latch you're talking about I don't know what the proper term is for that but that that little security lock it caught what's that it caught it caught somehow. I don't know how, but somehow it caught. The door vibrated the right way. Something happened. The door yeah. itself, you know, they could put the key in and it would unlock, and they could open it, you know, that inch that that it allows you to. But then, but the the safety thing was cu- was caught. So she called the manager, and the manager says, "Just you know, push on push on the door. You know, use your your uh, shoulder and push against the door real hard, and it'll pop out." And and so she did. And I mean, this girl couldn't have been, you know, 110 pounds soaking wet. And she went down the hallway there and she just, you know, she got a little bit of a running start and just boom, popped it. And the thing just broke right off. I, I feel very secure. In my I was like, I couldn't hear you there, but I assume you said that that makes you feel very secure. It, I, I, it does. It does. <laughs> so, yeah. So those things don't make me feel much safer. At least they have to make some noise when they do it, though. But. It, apparently, at least in this particular, this was a rel- relatively new hotel, just been built about three or four years ago, and uh, it was I was I was quite shocked. I thought she was kidding whenever she told me that the manager told her to do that. I laughed, <laughs> but apparently, so, the joke was on me. I- I'm looking at this guy's site here on, on Hackaday or his post anyway, and I'm guessing from his T-shirt alone that he probably did not, not. Uh, notify the manufacturer it, his t-shirt says it's fun to use learning for evil oh really it does yeah where does. do you see his picture uh i oh. followed the link to actually see i got it you got Let me, it. Uh, bring it up here it. on yeah. the uh video there you go. yeah so there he is uh nice nice uh good guy just looking to protect the public yeah he's he's out there protecting the world he's a superhero well i tell you if he's walking down the uh, hallway of your hotel with a uh, dry erase marker in his hand might be a good idea to alert the front desk yeah yeah <laughs> all right moving on so uh i know dan's a huge fa- uh, f- uh facebook fan and uh yeah. we got a story posted here uh, who posted this story was it ecom who posted this that um, that Facebook, yeah, Ecom posted this. Facebook uh, has hit one billion active users. Active users. I haven't read the the read into it enough to see uh, how they define active, but holy cow! Yeah, that's 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 definitely a lot of uh, a lot of people. Okay, moving on to the next story. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I told you uh, before we started, I'm actively leaving uh, Facebook. Like, the, so they're Facebook... going to have to change their news story now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, de- definitely. No longer uh, one billion users, Dan McCarthy has left. Yeah, so why I, so, in the world would you leave Facebook? I know we have well, some, some members, some administrators, some moderators on the site who can't stand Facebook and, and hate whenever anything is suggested that we change on Tech Support Guy that might make it a little bit more like Facebook. But you know, like, like a lot of forums are going to the trouble of having a little like button on their uh, on the posts, or uh, or they have uh, let you sign in using Facebook, or any number of other things that aren't coming to mind now. And I know some people very much dislike it 
whenever things become or you can add uh, you can request to be someone's friend on the site and yeah. uh, people are very antisocial I think well see and that's kind of why I'm pulling back from Facebook you're, you're antisocial I, I, I don't I don't know no no most of the people that I am friends with I'd say maybe not most but uh, you know a good eighth of the people on my on my friends list I don't really know and I don't actually I find that when they do post something I mute them so that I don't have to see it anymore because I don't <laughs> care I don't want to know that your cat vomited or that your dog is sick or that you're having a bad day even I don't care so I'm going to uh, slowly remove myself from Facebook that's interesting do you think that's an increasing trend because some of the people I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be too rude here, but I think a lot of the people who I know who aren't big fans of Facebook are also not exactly of our, are older than us, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah. I think that the, the, the generation gap is there and a lot of, all the young people are on using it, just like with MySpace and all of that. Sure. So is it a generation thing? Are you just getting too old for it now? Or is that going to be an I increasing trend? I'm a curmudgeon, and I think it is going to be an increasing trend. Uh, trend. I think that uh, uh, it's kind of like uh, overstimulation, you know. Uh, I would actually rather just kind of spend time with my family. If I if I want to like find out what's going on with you, I'm gonna invite you over, you know. You know, you or, haven't invited me over. That's not true, actually. <laughs> I've invited you over on a, a, a couple of occasions. I, I'm gonna claim otherwise, even though it's not true. Um, but with that, I, with with my Facebook comment aside, or or in context even, I am using Google Plus a little bit more. Really? For because Google Plus is it's it's been said like it's because there's where no the one there. That's why it's where the geeks hang out. <laughs> well, that that there, there's that too. But I find that Google Plus has al almost become my newsreader because I can follow you know general technology and I get. I get Wired, I get uh, Guy Kawasaki, I get a bunch of people that come up in that um, posting on general technology. So CD, uh, ZDNet, uh, who else is on there? CNET. You know, it's, it's almost like a, a stream of news as opposed to um, terribly social. Hmm. I, and I'm not social. So Facebook, one billion. Hooray. I'm running. Away. Interesting. Well, and see, I know a lot of people who are moving away from Facebook because of privacy concerns. And I guess if you are of the paranoid sort or don't like people knowing about where you are, what you're doing, then Facebook is certainly not the right site for you. Right. But, uh, right. Yeah, it's interesting to look into. So the, the privacy isn't a big issue, I don't think. I think any privacy issues that, that Facebook brings up, they address fairly quickly. I've been pretty happy with it in terms of privacy. Yeah, yeah. I can't complain about their privacy. I just, it's mostly me. I don't like people oh. running away well <laughs> I got nothing else to say about that moving on right? I'm, I'm checking into Facebook I have 298 of my closest friends on there that I'm watching exactly, and, exactly. Uh, every one of them I know personally now I, I hope that if your mother listens that she is not offended by that <laughs> she I, is I, my I friend she just signed up for an account about two weeks ago she is also my friend See the, and that's why you're leaving. I'm that, gonna tell her I, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I had an interesting uh, uh, problem about a week and a half ago. I uh, was, I have one, you know, main computer at home that I use. It's running Windows Vista. hasn't been reformatted in a very long time, and I'm aiming to keep it that way. It's got uh, the primary partition is uh, three hard drives on a RAID five for those who who care about that or care about the geeky stuff. And I have this temporary drive that I had in there as well. It's a 10,000 RPM fast little uh, hard drive that I just use for temp stuff. You know, whenever I'm rendering videos, I throw them on there. Uh, you know, stuff that, that I don't really care about and uh, that because that wasn't on RAID 5. And so I go to start, and also my, um, my temp folder for Windows and my, um, my uh, hmm, what do you call it? It used to be called virtual memory. What do they call it now? Uh... I'm too old. In any event, virtual I'll find it. Virtual memory. Here. What's that? Virtual memory. Is it still called virtual memory? I thought I, it was called something else. Now, yeah, it is. It All right. 
Um, your virtual memory, uh, I had that set on this other drive because it was faster and not used much. So anyhow, it, it was just for that kind of stuff. And so I go to turn on my computer about a week and a half ago, and it, you know, bio screen comes up and runs a little longer than usual, and the Windows start screen comes up, and then the bio screen comes up and waits a little longer than usual, and then the Windows start screen comes up, and then the bio screen comes up, and I'm stuck in a loop. And try safe mode, and, uh, and that does come up. And I come to find out that my uh, 320 gig, 10,000 RPM hard drive is showing up as 8 gig, sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes not showing up. And in either case, I can't read anything on it. So my hard drive died. So I figured, no big deal, I'll get a new one. And, uh, and I did. And in place of that one, I decided to go for SSD. So I actually got two SSD drives in there that I have set up as a RAID 1, just because I don't want this to happen again, because it was a pain in the uh, neck. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so I, uh, I, I put these two new SSDs in and, and set up all the temp folders onto there again and realized that I had some videos and some other things on there that I needed that were really gone. I was thinking, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. All my data is on the RAID 5. Turns out I've been putting, you know, more stuff over on this temp drive and hadn't really finished processing it or thought about it. And it was gone. So we tried some recovery tools at the shop, and we were not really able to get anything. Uh, Bobby, you know, at the shop suggested that I send it into Drive Savers, and we've had very good luck with Drive Savers in the past. I don't know if you've used them before, Dan, or know anyone who has. They are excellent, and uh, I think we even have a TSG coupon code for them somewhere. They, they were a sponsor at one time, and we have something that will get you 10% off. I'll find that. But, uh, but that's not the reason I mentioned them. They are the best at what they do, and super expensive. Like, to recover a normal hard drive, most of the customers I deal with have paid around $1,000. Very expensive, but they can get the data back. And when if that's important data to a business, that's worth it to them yeah. to spend that money yeah. for it. This, yeah. in my case, was not worth that amount of money. So I was forgetting it. I was, I was just trying to deal with the fact that I've lost some data and I should have known better. And then I realized, about six months ago, I installed a program called Crash Plan, which is kind of like Carbonite and Mosey and those other online backup systems. And I wondered to myself, gee, Mike, when you set this up, do you suppose you were smart enough to tell it to back up this temporary drive as well? And it turns out I was. <laughs> I don't know if that was smart or just dumb luck. I, it might have been a little bit of both. And it very likely could be that the program automatically selected all hard drives to back up. And I didn't tell it otherwise. <laughs> I'm going to claim it was my decision and that I thought it through and, uh, and sure. saved my data. So it took me, you know, three days to recover about four gigs of data because uh, it had to download it all from their website. And uh, so it wasn't terribly fast, but I have all my data and very happy about That's it. That's awesome. Yeah, so I wanted to mention that for several reasons. People often ask about my, you know, computer life, real life, and so on, and, and what tools I use and such, what kind of computer I have. So people would, might be interested in that aspect of it. But most importantly, back up your freaking data. Don't be well, like I thought I was. <laughs> what what's the cost for the the monthly cost for the service that you're using? Yeah, the service I'm using is there's a lot of cool things about Crash Plan, and I'm gonna put a link to them in the show notes. They are not a sponsor. I'll make that perfectly clear. They I get nothing out of this. I really just like their program, and it's CrashPlan.com. And what's cool is they have a free version of their software that you can use, install on your computer. It works on Mac, Linux, Windows. And the free version will allow you to back up to external hard drives or to other people's computers who are friends of yours or your own computer somewhere else. So I have our servers at the shop, for example. One of those do a backup to my home computer. And uh, that way it's off-site. They're in two different towns. The place burns down. Hopefully my house won't burn down at the same time. Uh, and that's free. You download it as much data as you want to send off to another computer somewhere, whether it's a friend computer or, or another one of your computers, completely free. So it's hard oh. to fight with that. And then they have this, uh, I'm trying to find it here. They have a family plan, which is what I'm on. Here we go. So that's free. If you want to be able to upload to them, which I chose to do, so where you actually back up to their servers, you can get a 10 gig uh, account, which isn't a lot of space, but if you just have some pictures and emails and diaries and whatever else, that might be enough for some some you know, home users. But that's twenty five dollars a year. I oh, mean, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's that's nothing. It's two dollars a month to yeah. back up ten gigs of data. So that's that's, that's nothing. nothing. So you're dumb if you don't do it. The next one up is fifty dollars a year. So we're talking about less than five dollars a month, and that's unlimited data, as much as you want to <laughs> upload off of one oh. computer. 
Oh, wow. $50 okay. a year. Say it again. $50 a year. Right, $50 a year for per computer. But the account I got is the next one up. It's $120 a year. It's their Crash Plan Family Unlimited. And that you can put on anything up to, up to 10 computers, and it's unlimited backup. So you pay $120 a year, install this program on up to 10 computers, and it'll back up as much information as you want. Well, that might actually beat my plan of using SkyDrive and Dropbox and... Uh, and it's so freaking simple. Yeah. It's yeah. dumb easy to use. You set it up, you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, and uh, and it does it all in the background. It's just like Carbonite and all these other well-known ones. But, uh, mm -hmm. but I, re I really like the pricing structure of it, and the program itself works real well. I've been very happy with it. Yeah, I'll have to look uh, look up some more details about the company, how long they've been in business, what, what yes. their uh, profit margin is and all that. Right. Cause that's cheap. It is cheap. And I've been using it for about a year now, I guess. I've been using it for about a year. Ever since Mosey stopped offering their unlimited plan, I started okay. using them. And have been this, pretty happy with it. This sounds like a good candidate for my wife. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. And that's what I've done with the 10 accounts that we have. Yeah, I've got it on my computer, on Heather's computer, on Heather's sister's computer who just went off to college. I've, you yeah. know, I've got 10 computers I can put it on. I might as well back up their stuff. Well, what's your access like to the uh, to the data? Is there an uh, interface that you can actually just get access to any of the individual files, mm -hmm. or yes. is it okay? Yeah, and you can do that through the actual application. I don't know if you if it gives you web access to the files like uh, Carbonite does. Um, oh. Trying to log in now to see if it does computers history restore. Yeah, it looks like it does. So if you stream. Sucks. Yeah, Ustream looks like it just died for me as well. Um, but uh, but uh, so yeah, I'm I'm logged into it right now, and I'm not going to share this because it does show all of my files and folders. But uh, <laughs> but you can, and what's also nice is it also keeps past iterations of the files, so it does versioning. Now that I wonder what it uses. Yeah. So I wonder magic. what the technology behind, like Git or something, or Subversion CVS. Magic. Because, uh, honestly, I, I can accomplish similar things, uh, Magic, by using, um, by using R-Sync and, mm -hmm, right. uh, uh, and, and other drives, other online storage places mounted in such a way that I can just R-Sync to the, to the drive. Like Dropbox can, I believe, keeps versions as well. I think you have to pay extra for Dropbox to do versioning. I think by default it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think you have to get a paid account from them to do that. But in any event, yeah, I think you're right. It does. It is an option. So anyhow, it's it's really cool. It's worth checking into. And the point being, back up your stuff. And this is a good solution. Check out the others as well. Check out Carbonite. Check out Mosey. I'm sure there are many other ones out there, but those are the big ones that I'm aware of. But I've been very happy with this one, and it saved my butt on this case. So. All right. All right. Any other stories you want to talk about, Dan? Um. Uh I just want to mention Windows 8 is coming out three weeks. What? Officially What's Officially coming out. Windows 8. I've never heard of it. What's that about? It's a crap operating system from the, Microsoft. Now, hang on. Now, that's a new one with the Metro style, right? Don't call me Metro. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, we talked about that in a... Uh, uh, hang on here. Let me switch uh, switch shots here. Go ahead, there. We've, I've got a visitor in the in the room. I'm a... I, I thought I heard Heather. <laughs> oh, no. Bentley. <laughs> Fred Bentley <laughs> wanted to say hi to everybody. <laughs> so Windows 8 comes out here in a couple of weeks, Bentley. And he's pretty excited about that. He, he likes the touch interface of Windows 8. It's not called Metro, but it's easy on his paws. to you know Because right? the current one, it's really hard to... Or, to, or his nose. Right. Yes. Perfect. He could use his wet nose. Yes. Just. <laughs> so uh, how is this going to go over when people start seeing Windows 8 in the, uh, in the stores and such? And I do you think, expect it's going to be immediately coming out on all computers, or is it just going to be on touch devices? I think that it's going to come out only on touch devices, tablets, and uh, touchscreen laptops that, that do exist. And I think it's going to flop. Hmm. I think it's going to be... Um, I, I can't remember who's, which of my friends or colleagues said this, but they said kind of Windows does in every other type of... We, we mentioned it on our show on Windows 8. Every other operating system is good. Um, Vista sucked, ME sucked, uh, XP was alright, and Windows 7 rocks. 
but uh, I think Windows 8 isn't going to do so well. And even the pricing structure, they've given steep, steep discounts for oh, yeah. upgrades for Windows 8, so they're kind of trying to bribe you into upgrading, but there's really no reason. Um, Windows 7 is it, it's a stable operating system, and I think people are just now, in fact, uh, where I work, most people are just now getting their up upgrades to Windows 7. So. That's often the way it works. Is that in the corporate environment, you'll have updates, yeah, that are a couple, a generation or two back, just because they like to wait until everything's very safe and and well known and well tested before they jump in and put a new operating system out there. Windows 8, I've talked about this before, is excellent for touch devices, and I I think that even on desktop devices, a lot of users, home users, people who are just looking to surf the web, are going to like it. It's simple, it's easy, and it's dumbed down. For bit, lack of a better word, <laughs> it it really is, and I, I that maybe that's what they're going for. But computers are great because you can do so much with them. That's so why people much. like you and I like them. But so I think more and more it. people like the iPad, the iPhone, these devices that just work. They don't have to worry about what file system it has. They barely have to worry about how much space they have anymore. They just they just work. You just hit a button, it launches the web. There's no yep. settings, there's no viruses, there's no... <laughs> so, hey, easy, <laughs> easy. It, this is a Microsoft uh, offering, so there are, going to be, there are going to be viruses. Now, did I hear that Windows 8 is going to come with its own antivirus built in? I, I believe Windows 7 came with its own antivirus built in. Fair enough, I think it did. I think uh, Security Essentials is basically built it's, into 7, but I think it's more it integrated Windows in 8. But. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So, well, we shall see. So, if you're looking for a new touch device, I think Dan and I both agree that Windows 8 is a good way to go. If you're looking for a, a tablet or even yeah. maybe even a phone, it might be worth looking into. Although it is still a first generation system, so you you know might want to wait a couple months for the bugs to get worked out. We shall see. But for desktop computing, if you're a geek, it's you're going to miss the desktop. Yep. I know the desktop app is there, but it's just not the same. It it, it really isn't. I, you. And how do I get back to where my programs are? And where the hell is the start menu? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be an adjustment. It'll be interesting to see how well it takes off. I'm a curmudgeon. I don't want to do it. All yeah. Right. You're going to leave Facebook, forget Windows, go back to DOS. You know what? It's funny. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> back in my day, we had 28.8 and it was fine. <laughs> Yes, yes it was. Uh, that, October 26th, that's when that's coming out. Uh, I think they're having a press release on the 27th. I don't know why, the 27th. That's weird, it doesn't um, be that much later. And, and I think they're talking about uh, their Surface, uh, their Surface tablet, and possibly a Windows 8 phone uh, that they're going to release that's maybe a Microsoft uh, uh, hardware. That is the rumor. Excellent. Yes. Windows 8, hoorah. Hoorah. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on things, and we will... Uh, I'll try and get my Windows um, 8 uh, tablet up here for next time, maybe. Maybe I'll show that off a little bit for those who are interested in seeing the final version of it. And uh, and then maybe we'll talk about... Uh, what else are we going to talk about next time? Uh, holiday suggestions? Geek gifts? Yes. Uh, geek gifts. I think that would be imperative, since we'd be about a week and a half, two weeks away from... Black Friday. Right. So our next live show is going to be Sunday, November the 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can go to techguy.tv to watch that live at 1 p.m. Eastern, Sunday, November 11th. Or you can go to techguy.tv to see the show notes, watch the past episodes, download MP3s, videos onto your iPod, iPhone, iPad, maybe Windows 8, and, uh, and check us out there. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate your time, and we will see you soon.